All right, guys, welcome back to the show. I'm Titus here with my co-host and not in person, Thomas, my brother, Eddings. What's going on? And we are going to answer the questions that you guys had. I appreciate you guys sending in. Those of you that use the Telby, um, not app, but basically down in the description, if, if you guys listen on Spotify, if you listen on Apple Podcasts or you watch on YouTube, down in the description, there will be a link to where you can click on and you can record a message to send in to air on the MVM show. So a few of you did that. Not as many as I expected, honestly. So that's all good. Um, I get it. Some people probably are nervous and don't want to be talking or something like that. But what we're going to do is answer some of those questions. And you guys asked some really great questions. And so we're going to get to, to those right now. Um, before we get started, just let me remind you again. Um, actually, let me say this first. Thank you. For all those of you that have been rating this podcast on Spotify. And if you haven't yet, and that's the platform you listen on, we'd really, really appreciate you guys do that. Rate us on there. It gets it out there more. Also on Apple Podcasts, you can write a review and you can rate it on there. And actually, just let me real quick say, just kind of give a shout out to those that did. Um, for uh, TS Wanda or Travis S., It says, enjoy listening to your show. Keep talking about ducks. Thanks all the way from South Carolina. So thanks, Travis, for writing in. And here we got, uh, says, showing love by Eddie Mac 503 Said, hey, guys, just just want to say thanks. I'm fairly new to waterfowl hunting, and y'all have helped a lot. The podcast is very insightful and interesting. I also like how you're all not afraid to show your love for Christ. Keep up the awesome work. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. And then lastly, the newest one is Dog Jitsu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said, great podcast. Gave us five stars. Great podcast. It gives me something to do when Duck City is over. Thank you for the videos and podcasts. So thank you guys for that. Appreciate all that. Everything really helps when you guys do that and brings the rankings down. I'm trying to hit the top 20. We've been down in the 40s before, which I think is pretty cool when it can, can consider thousands of podcasts out there. So. Anyways, uh, if you haven't, subscribe on YouTube if you like there, the MVM show. All right, let's get down to the nitty-gritty, and let's pull up the first question. Ready, Thomas? Yeah. All right. Well, I haven't heard yeah. any of these, by yeah. the way. So these are fresh. I'll so, let you go first, yeah. okay? Okay. This one is by Bull Sprig, and they'll probably give their name, but go ahead. We're gonna. I'm going to go ahead and play it right now. Make sure my setting's right here. Here we go. Hey, this is Bull Sprig up here in Iowa. Uh, just a couple of topics I'd love to hear your uh, perspective on. Uh, one is duck hunting the roost, uh, what your thoughts are on, on doing that. And then the second thing is the some of your favorite gear from last year that you guys used, and then also maybe some new gear that you're looking forward to, to trying out for this upcoming duck season. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, man. Thomas, what about the, let's go with the roost first. Uh, I did not hear any of that. Oh, you couldn't hear it? No. It just went quiet. Really? Uh-huh. Hmm. All right. Technical difficulties. That's weird. Man, you might not be able to hear any of them. <laughs> well, now we know calling in the person can't hear, I guess. That's weird because I've done this before with like Travis and you can hear it. So it must have to be in person, I guess. That's a bummer. Um, so what he was asking is he says, what's your opinions on shooting the roost? And then he said, what was your favorite piece of gear this last season? And what's some something you're looking to b- possibly buy next season? So oh, wow. why don't you? Um, yeah. Those are a lot of good questions. Um, yeah. Shooting the roost. Personally, I don't really think it's a good idea. Um, I mean, situations vary, right? Um, but I mean, it, it depends because if you if you can hunt somewhere else where you can more or less sort of traffic the birds or get close enough to hunt a spot near the roost, but don't blow the roost out you can kind of have more than one hunt off of that um, possibly. So that's, that would kind of be my first pick. Yeah. I would never do it. 
but it's very, I don't know. I, I think it's just situational. Yeah. Well, my thoughts are, I agree with you on that. Like if you're, fil- you're field hunting, right. But what if you're hunting a refuge that you can only hunt Wednesday and Saturday? Because we know there's sometimes there's spots that the birds like to come in and roost in the evening. So if you hunt the afternoon, you can have a really good hunt because they ain't going to stay there bottom line. They're going to get pushed out one way or another from Mm -hmm. someone walking through there or from it being hunted by somebody. It's going to be hunted. And it's, and it's hunting, it's hunting pressure too. Like if you can, if you can get in, get out, sort of speak, um, you're not going to do as much damage with like one or two guys or, you know, then if you take 14 guys out there and shoot the roost, yeah, they're going to be gone the next, the next mm-hmm. day, you know, or mm-hmm. they ain't coming back type of thing, you know? Uh, and it depends on the bird numbers and, uh, you know, just hunting pressure, I think really. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's what you got to ask yourself. Do you think you could benefit more? by hunting near or trafficking somewhere in between the, you know, in the pattern of where the birds are coming and going from, or if you just want to get, I mean, one awesome hunt out of it, possibly, you know, I, you never know. Mm -hmm. Well, to me too, like if you were just trafficking them at some point, they're going to stop flying over you in that part of the traffic too you know like they're gonna change their route to how they head to the roost Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. to or to or from it i guess would be the right terminology because when they go feed and stuff so at some point they're gonna learn like well we're not flying that route anymore so Mm -hmm. i'm not saying to hunt it but my like my thoughts are like as much as you can even call it i guess sometimes on the refugee there would be roost in my opinion, I would consider it kind of a roost. You know, that's where they come in the evening and they hang out all night. And we've caught on to that, whether it's because we lo- we came in in the morning and they were leaving. Or mm-hmm. we ca- we hunted in the afternoon and they just started dumping in there. It's like, well, yeah, right. on public land refuge where you're limited mm-hmm. on time, I'm hunting it. Yeah. You know, like- well, to me, to me, I'm thinking of a roost of, or I mean, a roost as like, massive amounts of birds like you know oh, 500 yeah. to a thousand birds in this designated field or part of a pond or, or lake or whatever like um uh excuse me sorry um as when we're talking more local like california hunting for sure i mean there's different birds doing different things so there's 100 percent. there's a lot of birds that use the refuges as a roost some Mm -hmm. do some don't Mm -hmm. so you know the thing is to me i feel like california is different because where we're at there's so much you know what i mean there's so much that it's so spread Mm -hmm. um over such a big area Mm. um that i don't think we hurt anything by you know, hunting that way, I guess I was taking a roost more of just like a one central, you know, like one spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, because, yeah. and that, that goes back to duck hunting being, it's the same, but it's a lot different, different places you go. Oh you man, I mean? it's so different. People yeah. get, people get triggered by when you say one comment, like, oh, know. you know, this, this is what you do or whatever. And because you live in a different state yep. and that doesn't really work there, people get like, oh, you know, this guy, don't know, or you're just whatever, yep. you know, yep. it triggers them, right? Mm-hmm. And so you do kind of have to be careful on what you say because mm-hmm. it's just, it's just, well, different. I mean, you don't got to be careful because it is what it is where you're at, but maybe we've been better at like not say, saying, like, I don't know how it is where you're at, but where we're at, right. this is how it is, like you're saying basically right Right. because because then i've been too careful and just not want to say anything and it's like i don't we don't want to be like that either you know like right well we're just not going to give our opinion because well blah 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 you know right and i don't even know if i really want to go into that this is kind of a rabbit trail but talking about different things 
and talking about like hunting quote unquote roost because we do a lot of evening hunting mm-hmm. locally and it's we have success we have success in the morning too mm-hmm. but i feel like california is so mild uh we're not necessarily we're weather dependent as far as like wind but i mean like like big pushes of birds and migrations and and cold fronts you hear a lot of guys back east and stuff talk about that right like oh we're getting a push and we're uh this cold front and it's gonna be snow and when it's cold uh these birds are gonna be moving they're gonna be feeding more type thing we don't really ever get that here like locally because right. of our, our weather's so mild so like when that kind of stuff affects what the birds are doing. So I, I feel like I've seen bigger groups of birds together, um, like in one spot, other places Mm -hmm. versus, versus here where there's really birds almost basically everywhere, Mm -hmm. but like concentrated wise, it's almost not as dense because like I said, we have so much area for the birds, you know? Yeah, totally, dude. That's all, the whole yeah. grasslands all the way up to the Sac Valley. It's almost like a solid strip of yeah, wetlands, you know? Mm-hmm. But now, yeah. now I, and I don't know where this guy's from, but um, he probably said, and I may have forgot already, I apologize, but I'm visualizing when I hear it's, questions like this i visualize more like it's a bunch of farm ground and there's ponds here and there you're like here's a pond and five miles this way there's a pond and that's where birds are roosting yeah if there was like you said if there's 500 birds a thousand birds in there and i'm in a cornfield that i'm hunting that they're going in to feed i'm I, why would i not go to the feed and hunt there you know i'm not gonna just go blow that pond out like why would i do mm-hmm. that's shooting myself yeah. in the foot you know yeah, mm-hmm. but maybe yeah. maybe that's a big hot topic because maybe people do that all the time. I don't like. There's people that go blow those out. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. dude, if I had the option and I had permission on the feed, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna mm-hmm. hunt the feed and I'm gonna get them in there. Or even if I have permission on a a route they have to the feed, traffic them. But mm-hmm. that kind of doesn't apply too, too much think here. About this. Really. Think about this. Like I said, it's all situational. What if um, the roost is on a property you have permission to hunt, but their feed isn't? Yeah. Yeah. Then what do you do? I mean, it's either hunt it or don't. I probably would. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, dude. So. I mean, you're just going to sit there and watch him because Joe blows down the road trying to. Yeah. I don't think so. And I don't know any. That's not has nothing to do with ethics or anything, in my opinion. Oh no, I don't. I don't I mean, think so either. I mean, you you still have a limit, a daily limit. Why exactly? What have to do with that? All the birds have to do is move to a different roost. They do it every year. Yeah, if you're hurting anybody, you're hurting yourself. Because that exactly. might be you, that may be be your one and done deal. Right. They might not come back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. More more likely so it, when you take you know a massive group and you hunt for five hours versus you get a quick one oh, or two right. minute limit and you're you're gone in one hour. Yeah, I mean, how many, sneak out. dude? How many times have we like, let's get out of here, let's get out of here, let's save this, you know? It's mm-hmm. like you get your limit, you want to get out. Like you don't want to sit there and mm-hmm. stretch it out. And I'm ta- that's yeah. just public ground. Period. I'm not talking about little honey hole spot, like mm-hmm. little ponds on private property, because that's something we don't mm-hmm. do. You know, we don't have the opportunity to. So yeah, yeah. I I mean, I think that pretty much covered it, don't you? As far as yeah. that question for us. So mm-hmm. what was your favorite piece of gear this last season? I'm going to try to sit there and think about it myself, man. It's like kind of semi. It's not hard to favorite say. Favorite piece of gear. From clothing um, to to anything, really. I mean, this was, I mean, if for some reason it doesn't feel like it, but this was our first year with the boat. Oh yeah. So I yeah. would say, yeah, the boat was my favorite piece. <laughs> uh, I know. Uh, I don't. Yeah, I guess you could call that gear, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, because you don't have to have you don't have to have a boat like we did. But if you had a boat with the motor and you can get new places, you can get into that yeah, fairly right. cheap. Yeah. So I, I would say boat for sure. Man, you just yeah, I can't even go around that one. 
man, just to be nice, I guess, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with you. That's definitely mine. Like that, we had that episode with Ricky and Nicholas. It's my, he said it, he nailed it. My boat is my duck lease. <laughs> mm-hmm. People, is pay there all this. another? Is there another like smaller? Piece I know that's that what I'm trying to think of. Because um, that, that's kind of that's kind of a given, right? I know, dude. The boat. Well, um, yeah. In your training, maybe think. not. Maybe some people would would get a boat and maybe not like it, but I don't know. Mm. Um, oh, you know what? Eh, I'm just gonna throw this out there because I don't, I don't want to be too crazy. I, if I sat, I could probably write five different things and have a hard time to sign. But let me just say this: you give you a second to think. I will say this year I switched to final approaches, um, uh, Texas rigs. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. Oh, so now, and that's new for this year. So that's kind of better for me because it was a new piece. Yeah. He kind of said that in his question, like what was some, your favorite piece of gear? Mm-hmm. I will say that, um, it's just so nice picking up and moving quick. Just boom. Like I never did before because I like throwing stuff in a, in a bat, in a slotted bag, which you can still do easily. Tom's taught me that one. Like my mindset was all, oh, if it's text rig, I leave them all tied together and let them, rub up on each other and get scratched up and ruined but we beat the snot out of those uh final approach mallards this year and all the other final approach decoys but i will say the rigging by far to me was just it was just a nice change of pace going from the elastic ones with the double hooks it just they would tangle up and you know (laughs) yeah drive me nuts Uh, especially if you're hunting with bigger number of decoys like lots of times we hunt with, you know, few six decoys for 12 at max, you know, but when you're hunting bigger water, like we were with those and you got, you know, six dozen, <laughs> that's like the only way to go. It is, yeah. Dude. That's a good one. You made that's me, a good one. you made me a believer in that for sure. Dude, how fast could we stick at five dozen out? Like, I feel like yeah, two quick. guys quick. Quick. What, like in seven, eight minutes or something, you know, like super quick. So, mm-hmm. but anyways, uh, what about this coming year? Have you, have you even spent any time thinking about that? I have, I can't say I, I'll tell you what, a piece of gear that I want, and I think you do too, for sure. And it's an, again, it's an expensive piece. Maybe we can give it a little bit cheaper idea, but is a 28 gauge. I, I've been wanting one for three years and it's like this year I've got to make it happen. Uh huh. And I really do. I ain't gonna lie. I don't want to spend no three thousand dollars. I I did. I spent fifteen hundred on my A five out the door. Um, I guess they were. A little, I didn't get the fancier one, but I that was a lot, right, for me. And I was just like, man. But you know, that's been s- eight years now, and I've never regret regretted that. But to buy that twenty eight gauge, I think it's like around twenty eight hundred, isn't it? Or is it eighteen hundred? The, yeah, the Benel- depending the, on which one you get. The Benelli three inch one, the brand new one. Uh-huh. Isn't that yeah. close to three? Yeah, I think it's like twenty eight. That's something like that, a yeah. lot. That's a lot of money, man. Yeah, I don't know. No, it might be a little cheaper than that. I think it, it? I can't remember now. It's been a while. I went to a gun store and and had a guy put my name on the list, but that was like six months ago, and I haven't heard from him. So I think now I need I, to go back in there. Yeah, you should. I I know I don't need to get that model, but the reason I like that one is I really want a three inch. Not that you have to have that. I feel totally confident I would kill them with a two and three quarter inch, but they're the only one right now that I know of for a 28 gauge that makes three inch. And then as far as shot size go, um, heavy shots, the only ones that make three inch 28 gauge shells, I believe. Yeah. I do, now I could be wrong, and people are yell, you're yelling at me right now, listening to this. But I'm almost 100 percent sure it is. Yeah. I, I know guys are going to come out with three inch if they haven't already, but for 28 gauge. But as I'm as far as I know, it's two and three quarters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. That there's a couple different things. The actually a 20 gauge was. I was first. I was going to do 28 too, but I was like. I don't have a 20 yet, so I need to get one. Um, I've been using my A5 this whole time, so. Hey, well, uh, then that's perfect, dude, because if he calls you up and says, I have a 28 gauge, you can just let me buy it. 
Yeah, it's true. Don't take uh, your name off the go, list. I need to go in. Oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But I need to call him and harass him and say, hey, man, it's a deal, you know? Yeah, because they might have come and gone already. Well, I was like fifth on the list. Mm-hmm. Kind of see where you're at that. now. Yeah, so maybe <clears throat> maybe I could uh, find out if he's got more coming or what. Because mm-hmm. I know if you don't get it early, it's it's too late, you know? Yeah. So tw- the 20 gauge, for sure. Um, there's a – oh, I actually just sent – this is slightly off topic, but um, you probably could do a podcast on this too, but <clears throat> I sent my uh, situators in to be um, – you know, get worked over, whatever, whatever service. they do. I had a service, right. I had a small tear like in the crotch mm-hmm. area. So I, ha- I haven't heard back from them yet, but I know they're, um, they're, um, the people that they have take care of it mm-hmm. have received them. So I'm curious to hear back on, on what they do and if they, what they charge and you know how what the turnaround is and all or, that we could probably keep you guys posted on that or if they charge right yeah Kevin, kevin's had his sent his in i don't know how long he's had his i think for quite a while and he said he's sent his in like a couple times and he's never been charged yet and they mm. even changed his boots out so oh, wow yeah i'm like that's a massive change i mean that's three four hundred bucks for a new pair of boots i think yeah if you look at the price list so i mean as far as I know, dude, it sounds like they're being pretty fair. I don't think you're gonna get charged nothing because that's a that's a stitching. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we could we'll keep, keep you guys, guys updated, updated yeah. on that. Yeah, because I'm I'm a mine did the same thing. I was stepping over log, uh, hunting in the snow. If you haven't seen that video, it's on YouTube. I mean, I didn't put that on there that I did that, but when I stepped over the log, it was pretty high. I was like, I had to hike my leg a lot higher than. Titus is able to stretch normally <laughs> and it went and I was like oh crud and and it was great here's what's crazy about that is I stayed um in the water we were standing in the water and it was over the waist so water was coming in with that crotch blown out where the stitching is same exact terror Thomas had it's so crazy because mm-hmm. I've I've had these waiters and had no nothing happen like that but Anyways, I didn't catch it on a branch or nothing, but I know water was coming in. I could semi fill it, and that day it was like, I think it was. I want to say it was negative five. It was either zero or negative five. I can't. Um, there's a day there it was colder. Anyways, when I got back, I was wearing my gradients underneath, and my whole whatever side the water chose the path it chose to pick, it was wet, but I wasn't cold. That's what's really crazy. Mm-hmm. So, like, it insulated. Even though it was wet, it was still kept me warm, which is really crazy in mm. that kind of temperatures. So, that's yeah. a, that's something to be said. You know, you don't know until you experience it, but I was really impressed. I was like, even knowing now that I have a blowout, if I have a blowout, my waiters, and it fills up, I can basically still hunt, you know. Mm-hmm. It doesn't ruin the hunt. Whereas some waiters, you just, like, you're done. Yeah. So... Kind of hung out on that area. These other ones aren't going to take as long, I don't think, to answer. But those were three strong questions. So thanks for sending that in, man. I'm bummed, Tom, so you can't yeah. hear this. So I guess you'll hear a little gap in sound. I'll just tell you what they said. But here's from Brian Juiced. And play it right now. Hey, guys. My name is Brian. I am a fifth-year duck hunter from the San Francisco Bay Area, hunting up in the Sassoon Marsh and up in the Sac Valley. And I had a question, how much time should I be dedicating to practicing my calling in the off season? Is that something I should do daily, weekly, the month? Should I wait till it gets closer to duck hunting season? Or should I hit it while I have some more time in the summer? Thanks, and I really appreciate the podcast. All right, you there? Yeah. Yeah, it's Brian uh Juice. He's he's from the Bay Area and he hunts like the Sassoon Marsh and like the Sac Valley and stuff like that. And his question was that he was wondering how often should he call practice his calling? Um just like like all off season, every day, uh weekly, monthly. 
um, you know, like how often? Yeah. Um, I mean, especially if no other time, at least, you know, fall, you know, mm-hmm. before, before season, not on opening day. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't hurt. The more you practice, the better you're going to get. Right. Um, um, the thing is practicing like the same thing. Like if you practice what you already do, you're really not going to get better. Mm -hmm. So like you have to almost, there's a lot of uh, videos online. Titus could tell you which different ones. Um, but if you look up online, you know, championship, uh, live duck calling or some of the, the champions, um, that put videos on YouTube, um, and just try to just work on that and just work on different things and maybe things that you're not comfortable with, or you want to change, or you want to add something to what you can already do. Um, you know, that's going to be your best bet, Mm -hmm. but you know, and, and honestly, it, it doesn't matter any time is good because even if once you learn it, you'll remember it Mm -hmm. and you might, it might take a, just a little bit to get really good, you know, on that specific thing again. But once, once it's like, it's weird. Once something kind of clicks in your head uh, with your, with your air pressure and with your specific call that you're using, um, I don't feel like it's, I don't feel like you lose it really easily. I feel like you, it's like you kind of establish it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, honestly, any time is good, but more, I mean, for me, I practice obviously more going into season before season Mm -hmm. than I do in the summertime, you know? Yeah. So I know, I mean, if you were to just, I think we all know the answer to to that. Even you, Brian, like if, if someone was to say that you want to be the best of the best then practice every day. Right. But I think we all know most of us aren't really going to do that unless you're getting into competition calling. Mm -hmm. But like you said, Thomas, my biggest, biggest thing that I tell people is do not practice to the calling competitions because not now that will teach you voice that or, or control air control and all that stuff but that's not none of those guys use those same methods as far as the sounds in the field you know you're not yeah. wah, 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 wah. you're not doing that in the field did, the, did i say that right was live the... yeah you said it but it you said it quick so i don't know if people caught that you know is make because sure there's two, you there's two separate ones. Right? Yes, there's you know competition style, and then and they call it meat. They call meat calling. Meat, yeah. Um, they call it what else? There's another word. Uh, something street. There's another one I didn't. I just recently learned about all that about the podcast I did with Brad. But anyways, yes, look up live because and me and Thomas are both probably gonna steer you right towards um. Uh, What's his name, Thomas? My mind just went blank. Brad, Brad Allen. Yep. No, no. Um, or or uh, Brett Crow. Brett Crow, with JJ Letters. Look at type in Brett Crow C R O W E live duck calling competition and copying that guy. He, I mean, you listen to him. He sounds like a real duck. I mean, like everything. He sounds like hundreds of ducks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane. So like, I really like. That's what I do. Is I practiced him. I blow it a little bit on and off through the summer, but nowhere near what I do. Like Tom said, a month before season starts, I'm on it every day, multiple times a day. At least for myself, I am. Like in my office, every time I walk by, I always grab and blow them. And I like blowing them in their kitchen too because the acoustics sound really good. But blowing them outside <laughs> yeah. in your backyard definitely is not the same. It's more a hunting scenario, and it, that's what it's really going to sound like. But our kitchen mm-hmm. has a little bit of an echo. I was like, man, I wish I sounded like that out in the yeah. marsh. But everybody sounds good in the garage. Uh huh. Totally. So yeah, change your environment too. You know, go to different places and blow it because you almost be disappointed in yourself. You're like, man, I thought I was sound good too till I blew yeah. out here and it was not echoing back at me anymore. That's why the guys in the timber have that really good sound. Mm-hmm. You hear those same guys blowing open water and it's like, hmm, 
<laughs> not what I thought you were when I heard you originally in the timber. Don't sound as good, huh? <laughs> no. But um, that, and then you were saying, Brad Allen, I would say if you were a brand new duck caller and didn't know how to blow a duck call, for sure go to, to Elite Duck Call's uh, YouTube page and watch Brad Allen instruct because he's the man when it comes to that stuff, for sure. So, mm -hmm. man, dude, that stinks. You can't hear those. I wish I could have. I guess we know now you got to be in person. Um, you got time for, there's only two more left. You got time for that? Yeah. Okay. Let me play this one. I hate having to relay this to you. I don't know why. You can't hear that. It's so weird. All right, I'm going to hit play. Hey, Titus. My name is Isaac Axe. I am 16 years old, and I live in Southern California in the San Bernardino County. I just want to say thank you for all that you've been doing and your podcast is super encouraging and fun to listen to. Uh, I'm actually moving up to Idaho uh, around Boise area in June. And uh, I'm really excited about that. But I just want to ask, what is the biggest difference you would say in duck hunting or waterfowl hunting when it comes to California and Idaho? Okay. So that was Isaac Axe. He said he's 16 years old and he's moving. He lives in Southern California and they're actually moving to the Boise area, uh, Idaho in June. And he wants to know like just what's the big differences between hunting in California versus hunting in Idaho. Mm. <clears throat> well, just, just from <coughs> the, the, uh, can't remember now if I went there once or twice. It's hilarious, but I think I only went there once. Um, obviously temperatures are going to be a lot colder there. Um, you know, you're going to have more, well, you got the snake river, right? You're going to have more river systems, um, there than probably, well, I shouldn't say more, but I guess the environment is mm -hmm. going to be different. You, you're going to, it's going to be a little bit more, um, uh, mountainous. There's going to be some valleys and stuff like that too. But I mean, I, I guess the similarities would be, you know, there's ag here and there's birds here and there's going to be ag there and you're going to find birds there. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it's just, um, that's a good point to bring up though, Thomas, that's a big tip really is, Isaac, when you and I appreciate you sending that in and everything. Nice thing you said, Isaac, about the podcast and everything. Just really focus off, focus on finding ag next to the river. It sounds kind of obvious, but if you don't think about that, you know, that's they definitely will bounce back between there. So I just want to throw that in while you're going through that, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Do your Onyx research, you know, or your Google Earth and see where ag's planted. And I would definitely pinpoint on those spots. And I would definitely mm -hmm. think you need some type of vet. If you could, I'm not saying river's the only thing to hunt there, but if you could get some type of vessel, kayak, something, just be careful mm -hmm. and safe, you know, but. Uh -huh. that yeah, would... that, that's really all I got. Would it, you have anything to add to that? No, I mean, I feel like you think a lot deeper than I do. Sometimes I just think of the right off the top of my head things, but I always like your your input on that because you're thinking a lot more. But yeah, I would say just, a vessel, you know, of some sort, kayak, canoe, um, and then get to your spot. Um, and the big differences, like you said, weather for sure. Um, and then the style, I, I, you're going to, I will say you're probably going to be pretty excited when you see the lack of pressure compared to here. And I know a lot of people that live in Idaho and I don't blame them for this get, or any other state get frustrated because, you know, people come in and visit there from out of state which their intel makes it busier than it normally would be or used to be back in the day but you know as long as you're respectful and you're becoming a resident anyway so i think you're going to be pretty good um yeah just start wearing that shirt uh don't hassle me i'm local they can't <laughs> yeah. they can't they can't say anything anymore <laughs> because you're going to be a resident so yeah yeah well you know what um here's another one if you're moving there, um, the big difference is, I know like this is not that way, but we hunted a lot of the river system up there, and at least I, I did because I went there multiple times, and I will tell you this, it does seem like 
and I could be totally wrong, so I don't have a ton of experience up there, but it does seem like it's a, it's a, it's a transitioning place. You could have thousands of birds in the spot you're getting ready to hunt, and by the next day, they could be out of there. So mm-hmm. if you find something worth something, I would be hunting it the day of if you could, because you never know. They might be gone tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Birds migrate anyways, but I feel like it was more. There's some places we've hunted where I think, for the most part, they just hang. You know, birds just hang out for long periods of time. Whereas I feel like mm-hmm. hunting the river, just the river I'm speaking of, they could be there for three at one day, for five days, for a week, for two, if they're not getting hassled with. But then mm-hmm. before you know it, they're they're bouncing if you get some gnarly weather. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a big thing you got to get used to because we're at the bottom end of the of the migration, right? So once birds get here, especially Southern California where you're from, Isaac, once they get there, they're pretty much there for till the end of the season, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part, whereas up there, that is definitely a spot. They're still working their way south. So that's something to get used to, too. Get in while the getting's good, basically, is what I'm saying. So, anyways, that was, the, that was the last question, I believe. So I appreciate you guys sending those in. And for those of you that have not done this or didn't know about this, because I think there's a lot of you that actually still don't know about this, um, I'm going to give you a... What you, how you do this, okay? So let me pull it up real quick to give you the right link. It's also going to be down in the description below. So you literally could just click on it. It'll take you right to this page and said hit record. But if you don't, if you want to hear it, you just put in say hi. So S A Y H I dot chat, C H A T forward slash the MVM show. All one word. And you punch that in your browser. On your phone, like Safari or Google or whatever, you punch that in, it'll take you right to that page. You hit record, you hit send, and then we get the notification and we'll have you on. And I really enjoy getting those questions from you guys. It gives us good topics and things to talk about. So anyways, you got a tip of the day, Thomas? Anything special you have just in life in general? (laughs) (laughs) Tip of the day? Yeah. Uh, That one kind of hit me off guard. Um, keep God first. Yeah, wow. that's a good one. Wake wake up early. Keep God first. Work hard. Eat a lot and work out. That's love, what I got love your family. Love. Yeah. yeah what is what, what what they say? Love, love your God. country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. I, in all seriousness, seriousness. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, and, and Thomas is. Been bulking right now. I know there's a lot. There's so, quite a few of you that listen to that power lift or do whatever you know, different types of training with the weights and stuff. So, Thomas is. What What did you start out, Thomas? Uh, one ninety six. And you? What are you right now? Uh, I was two fifteen this morning. <laughs> You're heavier than above us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gotta, I gotta keep going. Though. I'm, I'm tall, so I gotta yeah. put some. The difference between me and Thomas is I'm five, not quite five eleven. Tall. What are you, six one or two? Two. Two. Six so two. he can still be about two thirty. Actually, Thomas could probably be two sixty and look at the same build as me for his height. <laughs> so he's got room to grow. Big Daddy doesn't. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thanks for coming on, Thomas. And uh, yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, guys, keep sending those in. I really enjoy it and it uh, gives you a chance to be on the show. So we'll see you guys in the next one.